Ben Manning. Marty Saybrook, front and center, we have a wedding to attend. Yours. Perfect. Now, battle station number one. I have laid everything out in order of application. Foundation, to the left. You work your way to the right. Any questions? Yes. What? Is this yours? Well, it certainly was. I see. The mutt found it and used it as a chew toy. I'm so sorry. That's all right. I shall have a little chat with Penny later. <laughs> but not now or we'll fall behind schedule. Now, makeup. I have allowed 20 minutes, all right? Yes. Hair. I have allowed 15 minutes. I may need more than 15 minutes. Marty, your hair is so beautiful. Anything more than 15 minutes would be just gilding a lily, all right? Okay. Then we move on to battle station number three. Putting on the dress. Now, I've allowed a half an hour for that, just in case we need some last minute, you know, panic. Panic attacks, yes. That's exactly right. Why are you staring at me? I definitely chose the right person to be my best woman. Well, of course you did. <laughs> Besides, after everything we've been through, if I wasn't here for the payoff, I'd be really bummed. Mm, I know. I, I, sometimes I feel like I don't deserve this. <laughs> At a time like this, I get really scared. Oh, Marty. You deserve this. Gosh, when I met you, you were a mess. <laughs> you, you were unhappy and you were self-destructive, and look what you've done with your life. You've turned it completely around. You've gotten control over your, your lupus, and, and you've learned discipline to get all the way through medical school. You're a healer. You're a doctor now. I mean, you have a gift to share with the world. And all of your friends were all so proud of you, and we're thrilled to be here at the final little steps of the journey. Hmm. Um, maybe it's more like coming around a curve and there's a whole new road in front of me. Having children, mm -hmm. making a family, mm -hmm. reconciling with Patrick's mother and father. I mean, things I've dreamed about for so long. All the rest of the fairy tale. Which Cinderella? We gotta get you to the ball and we're not going to if we keep going like that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Makeup. 20 minutes. <laughs> I need some too. <laughs> All right, foundation. Start with that. Oh, do you know how to deal with these bloody things? You nervous? Uh, no, I'm not nervous. I just wish I'd bought a shirt with buttons instead of these bloody cufflink things. Patrick, Patrick. You gotta relax. This is the easy part. You gotta pace yourself because it's gonna get a whole lot worse. Thanks for the reassurance. That's why I'm here. I am your best man. It's my job to stand up there for you. I'm the guy who yells, look out! Just before you take that big plunge right off the old marital cliff. Surely it's not all that bad, is it? Just picture this. You're up there on top of Lantano Mountain. God, all your friends are watching you. Wedding march is just about to start. But your throat is dry. <laughs> it's parched. Your stomach's churning, you know, the sweat of your brow. It's running all the way down your back. You hear a rustling sound. You look up, but it's only Nora. My little Nora, the maid of honor, coming down the aisle. I'm, I'm sorry, is it, is it still called an aisle if, if we're in the woods and, you know, uh, there's a clearing? Patrick, the okay, please, I, please, please, I, don't, I, don't interrupt me. I'm kind of on a roll. Okay, uh, so Nora gets just about even with us, and your heart starts thumping now like a jackhammer and you're having a hard time breathing and then you look up and it's marty coming down the aisle floating on larry wolick's arm and it's the first time you've seen her in her wedding gown and she looks up and she sees you she smiles her whole face just lights up and that's when you get it you know that nothing else matters. Nothing else in this entire world matters except that woman walking down that aisle to become your bride. And then you know everything is going to be all right. Hey. 
your pack and wedding presents there. I hope the Thornard likes them. He's probably got enough toasters. <laughs> True enough. True enough. Well, he won't be returning this now, will he? Neither will his new wife. You seem a bit harsh, don't I? Shoot them on the wedding day. I'm the one who'll be finding it a bit harsh, O'Hara. If Paddy fingered me to the cops for the Whiting bombing, and since he mentioned my name to his new bride, she has to go as well. It's a pity. But there you have it. Cassie, this is Falcobi, your father's friend and housekeeper. Falcobi, this is Cassie Carpenter, it's David's daughter. I'm very happy to meet you, Mrs. Carpenter. Mrs. Colby, I'm so grateful that you have decided to meet with me. I only hope I can be of some help. Well, I shall leave you two alone. Thank you, Dr. Klaus. What can you tell me about my father's disappearance? One life to live. Talking about nothing sacred. Premiering in one week on ABC. Helen Nalty arrived home yesterday afternoon. Needless to say, I was most surprised to see him. He um, wrote me a note saying that it had become necessary for him to leave Salzburg for an indefinite period of time. Um, not to question him, not to worry about him. He made a phone call and said goodbye. A private car that uh, I didn't recognize picked him up and he left. Is that all? Yes. Except he seemed to me sad. I was bewildered. Do you have any idea where he may have gone? None. But I, I brought you this. It's um, a list of friends and associates. He asked me to contact after the accident. My name's not here. He, he wanted to wait until his speech improved sufficiently to speak to you himself. Thank you, Frau Kolbe. Dr. Klaus. Have you come to any conclusions? No, not yet, I'm afraid. Uh, would it be possible for me to stay here a day or two longer? Uh, Frau Kope has just given me this list of names of my father's friends and business associates. I I'd like to call them. Perhaps one of them might be able to help. Of course. You are welcome to stay here as long as you wish. I can't tell you how much I appreciate what both of you have done for me. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to sneak up on you. Oh, you didn't. I was just sitting here wondering whether or not to call Cassie in Austria. Uh, why? Why? Um, let me think. To find out if she arrived safely, to ask how David is. Is that so extraordinary? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, um, I'm having a little uh, trouble um, catching up with you about all this. I mean, you were so upset about Cassie's visit. And Furious at her and angry at me, you were practically incoherent. Oh, come on. I well, practically an incoherent, and then here you are this morning, steady as a rock. I want to apologize to you uh, for that particular outburst. Now, oh, Mel, <laughs> don't look so astonished. I, I was a bit overboard, and now I'm really bored by the subject. Really? I... Can I help it if you and Cassie happen to be obsessively curious? And since there's absolutely nothing extraordinary about my past or my childhood, why am I wasting all of this emotional energy on it? Yeah, you're right. I am astonished. 
So now, my only question is, are you going to take me to this wedding or not? Wedding? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. No, no. You know, I will always enjoy your company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to uh, hearing uh, Marty and uh, Patrick exchange their vows. My only problem is that I will want to be wading into that champagne pool and draining it dry. Aha. So. I won't try and distract you. I heard you pacing late last night. Did you ever get to bed? Um. Well, the bird's trying to teach me how to sleep standing up, so I, I'm just practicing. You can't go on like a, this, you know. Whatever it is that's bothering you, it's taking over, Todd. Forget me and your job. You aren't spending any time with your daughter. That's how I know. This is serious. Marty, she's... Mrs. Poetry Boy, and, oh, it just, it, it makes me sick. I, I mean, you, I, I think about them tying the knot, and then this, what, happy ever after stuff, and then, to top, these smarmy little kids, ah, <sighs> But it's over now, so we should just move on. Can we? Is it over this, this, this crazy obsession of yours with Patrick? Have you, have you done something, Todd? Oh, no. It's more like you're waiting for something to happen. Something that, uh, that you may have put in motion? This is none of your business. Isn't it? Tell me this is not about Patrick, whatever it is you have between you. You said last night, you said last night that this was finally going to be resolved. For good. Meaning? Meaning what, Todd? Fine. Fine. Clam up. But I know this much. If whatever it is were going according to plan, you wouldn't be in this rotten mood. So something's wrong. It has to be. And that's when this becomes my business. Are you in danger? Are you in danger, Todd? Because if you are, then I could be too, and so could Star. What? It's Manning. Hello? Hello? Hi. How are you? Mm. I'm so glad you made it back in time to be my date here at this wedding. Yeah, I know I cut it close, but I wanted to spend every last minute I could with Mom and Joey in Rome. Mm, I understand that. You okay? Yeah. Just thinking how beautiful it is up here and what a great day it is for a wedding. I miss Cassie. A lot. I understand why she went. I mean, I hope she has a great visit with David. Because she really deserves a father. Not like you and I. We're lucky. Yeah. I just wish it could have stayed the way it was. Life doesn't work that way, Jess. Things change. Do you think Mom and Dad will ever get back together? I don't know. You know... He called her twice while we were in Italy. <laughs> to come up to the ranch? Yeah. She still hasn't made up her mind, but I think it'd be great if she went. Really? We could spend some time alone. Mm-hmm. And then what? I mean, I know what you want to happen, but it just might not be possible. Why not? I don't know. Maybe because of all the hurt that they've caused each other? Well, then how come they get along so well at work? I have no idea. They have a wonderful working collaboration there at the bathroom, but... Exactly. So why can't they just collaborate on getting back together? Because maybe that's not what they need or want to do right now. That's all. But don't you think she's so lonely? Laura! <sighs> Hi! Oh, you look lovely. Oh. Oh, you should see the bride. 
Yeah, I, I plan to. I probably should start rounding her up. Yeah. How's it going with you? A uh, rhetorical question, or you really want to know the answer? Well, is there anything wrong? Maybe not, but I think that I'd still like to make an appointment with you. You see, I've been doing a lot of reading and thinking lately, right. and this is how I see it. I can pretend that I'm not about to go into menopause, or I could um, take charge of the situation. You take charge. Now, that would be a first. This is not funny, Larry. I'm telling you, I've just been, it's been, a, I've been crazy. I've been overreacting to everything and driving poor Bo crazy. You're not going to believe what I've driven him to now. <laughs> a bottle? A blonde? Worse. A bottle blonde? A motorcycle. You're kidding. What's he going to get? Ah! What? <laughs> Come on. Well, is that a statement for the record, Captain? <laughs> uh, no, Your Honor. <laughs> is everyone here? Hello, my name is Barbara Fitzwater, and I am a trial court judge for Lantano County. Though I see I haven't escaped the usual suspects. <laughs> I am honored to be here on this beautiful day for this happy occasion. Uh, will the groom and uh, best man step forward, please? somewhere and uh you could have some quiet or fun you like fun do you think you could lighten up enough to have fun for a couple of days as long as i don't ask you about yeah, it well that would be part of the deal all right fine i'll go to the sun i'll tell bridge what to do and i'll, I'll go to the airport i'll get the, the plane on the tarmac within the hour and i'll go tell judith judith Pack up Star's things. Well, she's gonna have to know where we're going. I have told you once already. The last right, thing you right. know. All right, all right. Swimsuits or park? I don't care. Whatever you want, it doesn't matter to me. Well, I could cool off. Fine. We'll Canada. Go to Canada. Bring a book. I hear it's boring. Todd. Talking. Be ready in a half an hour. <sighs> Margaret and Patrick. By coming together here today, in the presence of your friends, you are performing an act of faith in each other. That whatever obstacles you encounter, nothing will turn you away from the joyful duty of loving each other. I whispered, I'm too young. And then I'm old enough. Wherefore I threw a penny to find out if I might love. Go and love, go and love, young man. If the lady be young and fair. Ah, Penny, brown Penny, brown Penny. I am looped in the loops of her hair. The love you are pledging here today, you will find you have the entire world in the light of each other's faces. Patrick, do you take Margaret to be your wife this day and for all your days to come? I do. 
thought it when I met you for the first time, under full moon on Inishkarki. I thought it was by chance. But I was wrong. It wasn't chance at all. It was my destiny to find you and to love you with all my heart for the rest of my days. Margaret, do you take Patrick this day for your husband and for all your days to come? I do. From the moment I met you, the first night you kissed me, with the full moon shining on Inish Craig, there have been so many things that have tried to keep us separated. But it hasn't happened. Because we were meant to be together. Now, and for the rest of our lives, I love you. May I have the wings, please? Oh, love is a crooked thing. There's nobody wise enough to find out all there is in it. For he would be thinking of love till the stars had run away and the shadows eaten the moon. Ah, Penny, brown Penny, brown Penny. One cannot begin it too soon. And so, by the power vested in me by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm afraid you can't ask a judge to preside at a wedding and not have her have the last word. <laughs> but I'll be brief. In my capacity as an officer of the court, I've seen all of you standing before me at their best, and at something less. I've struck terror in the hearts of some of you. I frighten myself on occasion. <laughs> so I was uh, surprised and pleased that you asked me to participate in your celebration. I leave you with two wishes. The first one is that I never see you in my courtroom again. <laughs> and the second wish is that the life you make together always be full of love and joy. I could have died a long time ago if it hadn't been for you. You remember, I, I was throwing my life away, drinking too much and pretending that I didn't have lupus. All I did was yell at you. <laughs> no, all you did was care about me. It's because I saw the real you. A woman who's going to be a great doctor one day. And a wonderful mother. Your parents would be so proud of you right now. I believe that. And you know why? Why? Because of you. Yes, y y you've been a father to me. I'm not a substitute, the real thing. What I lost when my parents died. You've given so much of that back to me. The love and support. And I'll have to say thank you, but I don't... Shh, don't. 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 <laughs> hmm. Kelly, I was hoping you'd make it. Well, I, I wondered if I had a right. And I thought, you know, if, if he can forgive me, then... I have. The important thing is that you forgive yourself. I'm 
try. Thank you for your incredible generosity. Um, I, okay, the baby you lost because of me, he can never be replaced, I know that. But I hope someday you and Marty will have children of your own. Kelly, not everyone knows this, but I think you might be glad to hear it. Margaret's already pregnant. Congratulations, Matt. Ian, you having a good time? Oh, we always have a wonderful time at, uh, at weddings. Well, I promise we will not have any impromptu uh, football matches this afternoon. That's why we're not serving roasted pig today. Roasted pig? Explain. I'll see you later. Bye. Well, you, you had to be there. You know, it's probably just as long that you want. Oh, because you don't trust me with a picture of Cosmopolitan? No, 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 it's a, yeah. a reference to Antonia's bachelor party. And the um, <clears throat> cosmopolitan cape is history. Wow. Thank you. Although I was rather intrigued to hear the different versions of the story between yours and Blair's. Okay. I'm having a lovely day. I am not going to comment on that. Admirably discreet. Except you deserve it. <gasps> That's better. Although she said that you did, so, um, who am I to believe? Well, I don't know. I guess you'll have to wait and see. I suppose I could, um, enjoy your company without entirely trusting you. I see. So, like, I'm on probation. I have to win you over? Well, it wouldn't be any fun if I just, uh, surrendered. It's... Oh. Let me tell you something you don't know about me. I haven't met a challenge that I don't like, and I never give up. <laughs> so, how is it? <laughs> well, it's not as good as yours. Oh. Now, tell me, how did things go with Eli's caseworker? Oh, better than I thought. Did he ask you about uh, Antonio's record? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But he was seemed to be more interested in what Antonio did after he got out of prison. And then he wanted to know about how he actually was able to clear his name. Well, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. The only problem, I guess, is Chris. You know, he asked me if I thought that he felt, you know, how, how he felt about this perspective, the foster brother. And I said, yeah, he might be resentful, because I have to be honest. But, you know, I said that Chris has a big heart, and then I knew that in time that he would come to care for him like I have. Well, the bottom line is they know what a wonderful mother you are, mm -hmm. and what a difference that you could make in the life of a kid like Eli. I think I hope so. I really hope so. Listen, uh, Max, I heard about Gabrielle now. Are you expecting her to be released so soon? No, she got time off for good behavior. She does not sound anything like Gabrielle, but who knows? Maybe she's changed. You're okay with, with Al spending all this time with her? No. But she is his mother, and Maggie convinced me that Al deserves a say in the whole decision. So Gabrielle came by and picked him up yesterday. How was that? Awkward. She's busy trying to mother him without really knowing how, and he's trying to remember anything, if he can, about who this woman is. How about you, Max? How are you, how are you seeing Gabrielle and all? Oh, it's just, um, kind of sad. I know it was a hard thing to do, but I really think it was right. I mean, I was old enough to make some decisions on his own, and besides, if it doesn't work out, he can always call you and you can go bail him out. Well, who knows? Maybe he'll get through the first couple of days and want to stay for a while. Would you guys excuse me for a second? I need to say something to the groom. Hey, lady. Married hey, man. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Question. You remember almost two years ago when you were a fugitive and I found you hiding under a pew at St. James Church? Uh, not one of my finer moments. Mm -hmm. But you befriended me anyway and drove me at your own power to Washington, the Irish Embassy. Remember that? Where you walked into a trap. Right. And that would have been the end of me if it hadn't been for my beautiful getaway driver. 
So what's your question? Were you more scared then or an hour ago when you were standing up at that altar? <laughs> hmm. When you've had your own wedding adventure, I'll be happy to tell you. Fair enough. Promise me something, okay? I know that you're married and you have to be a respectful husband and citizen and all that stuff, but I promise you won't settle down. You know, start gathering dust and lead a life of quiet desperation. I wish for a, a quiet life of any kind, Maggie. But given my background, I'm not sure if that's possible. Come here. Well, Manning's home. We move now. Uh, Dorian. Yes? I'm having a wonderful time. That was the question, wasn't it? I thought it might have been something you ate. That smile of yours is scary, honey. Just back off, okay? At least I'm trying. On second thought, stick around. I may need reinforcements. Blair, what a surprise. Hello, Are Dorian. you on the guest list? No, I'm not, but I need to take care of something. So please let go of me and I will catch you later. Blair. Look, before you call the bouncers, I know that I wasn't invited, that I'm not welcome, but... There's something that I have to say to you, Patrick. And to you too, Marty. Blair, please. Patrick, uh, please don't turn me away. I know that I wasn't invited, but this won't take long. I just want to say a couple of things, please. First, to you, Patrick. I know how deeply you feel things. And how badly you both have been hurt by everything that you and Marty have had to endure. And my being pregnant, well, that was part of it. It was, it was hard for it for everyone. And, and then when we lost our baby, our Brendan... He's in heaven now. And I'd like to believe that he's happy. I believe that too. But here, on Earth, I want you to be happy. And I hope that, that your marriage can heal you in all those places that, that are hurt deep inside you. And that you can find that joy again that, well, that made Marty fall in love with you in the first place. Thank you, Blair. And Marty, all I have to say to you is that I hope that you can have a beautiful, healthy baby. And then you can love it as much as I love Star. And it'll bring happiness to, to the both of you for the rest of your lives. Um, thank you, Blair. You didn't have to say that. Be saying. I don't know. Seemed perfectly civil to me. Of course, I I know that uh, you're expecting blood. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. I'm sneaking a cigarette. Not here. No, no. Far away from the prying eyes of the nicotine police. <laughs> Beautiful ceremony. I gotta tell you, I was a little bit jealous I wasn't the one up there and Tony and to kiss the bride. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe we'll do it all again in the church. And you'll be our man. Great. Yeah, maybe by then you'll have forgotten all the trouble that I caused you. In your wild and crazy youth. We've all made a, a lot of mistakes. Mm, there's a bunch that I would like to undo. Then you wouldn't have learned anything. And you wouldn't be this amazing woman marrying this equally amazing man. And <laughs> really, you are, you've become such a decent and compassionate and talented and beautiful. 
beautiful. I'm just very, uh, I'm proud to, to know you. Give her a hug. your cue to go dance into the rest of your lives, all right? Please, God, give me a match. Okay, this is it. They're dancing all by themselves. I'll go for the poet, you go for the bride. And when they're down, keep firing over the crowd. That way they won't come after us. Then we have to get to Manning's penthouse. That's the part that bothers me. If he hears about this bloodbath, well, we'll just have to move fast. That's all. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.